The following program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry. But God in heaven was the one who designed and created man and women. And he only created two genders. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Lift Up Jesus. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to tune in to our television broadcast. Let me ask you this question. Do you ever visit Southern California? If you do, consider this a personal invitation to visit us here at Shepherd Church. You'll meet some amazing people, and it would be an honor to have you drop by. Visit our website at liftupjesus.com to get service times and locations. And now, let's get right to today's message, because I believe it's a word that you need to hear. So grab your Bible, your notes, and a pen, and let's begin. Love to have you take notes, uh, if you will, as we talk about breaking generational curses. This is a very difficult and challenging subject. And you might have more questions uh, at the end uh, than you receive answers here today. But hopefully it will give you a uh, pause uh, to think and things to consider. So Exodus chapter 20 is where God gave the Ten Commandments. This is where they're found, Exodus chapter 20. Almost, not all, but almost every law in the United States of America is based on the principles of one of these ten laws. Now, the very first commandment, I only want to read two. The first is found in verse 3, Exodus 23. Commandment number one, you shall have no other gods before me. In other words, God should be and desires to be the most important thing in your life. Nothing should ever be more important to you than the Creator God of the universe. Commandment number two is found in verse four. The Bible says, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven, above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. Verse five says, Pay attention to these words, You shall not bow down to them. Or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punishing. Everybody say punishing. Punishing Punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. I know that sounds unfair. That's what the Bible says. Verse 6, but. Showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and who keep my commandments. And all God's people said. This particular warning of children suffering to the third and fourth generation due to the sins of their parents is mentioned four different places in the Bible. Now, It doesn't use the phrase generational curse, but often that's what we refer to those passages. We do know several things. I want you to write this down. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28, there are curses for disobeying God, according to that chapter. There are 53 verses. That's 53 I can't show them to you because that'd be 53 slides. But I would encourage you to read through Deuteronomy chapter 28 in the Old Testament. There's a list of blessings for those who obey. And there's a list of curses for those who disobey. 
that are passed down to future generations from the parents and the people who do not follow God. In other words, none of us live in a vacuum. Anytime anyone chooses to obey God, there are consequences to that decision. And likewise, when you choose to disobey God, there are consequences that are actually measurable. Now, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I want to encourage you to do this. This is what I did this week. I got a blank piece of paper, just a blank, nothing on it, and a pen. And then I opened up my Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to write down all the curses that I see in this chapter. I'm not applying it to anything. I just want to see what the curses are. Now, I want to encourage you to do this. You don't need to have a Bible college degree, seminary degree. You don't need anybody helping you. All you need is a blank piece of paper and a Bible and a pen. Open it up. Read what those curses are. Now here's a partial list of what I wrote down, what I read. The curses that are placed. This is in the Bible. Tragedy, hunger, plagues, diseases, fever, sickness, drought, defeat, insanity, blindness, oppression, injustice, divorce, poverty, homelessness, war, slavery, idolatry, ridicule, illegal aliens, that's in the chapter, debt, thirst, drought, suffering, division, selfishness, disasters, persecution, anxiety, and fear. As I was reading it, it reminded me of the United States of America in which I live. It's amazing. Read through the list. They are not all the curses uh, in the Bible that are mentioned because beyond that list in Deuteronomy chapter 28, as you read throughout the Bible, there's all kinds of curses that are mentioned. The Bible says, cursed is the man who makes an idol in Deuteronomy 27. The Bible says, cursed is anyone who disobeys his parents. Children, are you listening? Proverbs 27, 16. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, Cursed is the man who gives nothing to the poor. Malachi 3, 9. Cursed is the man who robs God of his tithes and offerings. It's in the Bible. Proverbs 17, 13. Cursed is anyone who rewards evil. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Cursed is the person who who trust in man, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Now these are just a few. The word curse is found 185 times in your Bible. Now, when you read that word, what does it mean? If you read the Bible and you see this word curse, what does it mean? Well, write this down. It could mean, could, mean like when you swear. You use a curse word. We see this example by Peter in the New Testament. In Mark chapter 13, God said before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And after the resurrection, Peter is there warming his hands at a fire. A little teenage girl comes up, says you're one of the disciples. And the Bible says that he curses and he denies that he even knows the Lord. So it could be that. It could be, write this down, like witchcraft. When you put a spell on someone, or a, uh, what we would call a hex, uh, it's when someone claims, they claim to have supernatural power, and they put a hex on you of some sort. Now, I want to clarify something to every person here. Only God has supernatural power. Or, God, if God allows Satan limited power, as in the example of when God allowed Satan to curse Job, we read about that, and afflict pain in order to test his family, God allowed Satan to do that. But whenever we read the word curse, usually most people 
we think of this spell or a hex. And the reason we go there is because we've watched Beauty and the Beast too many times. <laughs> we've watched Cinderella too many times that there's this magical spell that has been placed upon someone and the only way to reverse the curse of the spell is to perform some heroic act of valor and in so doing it counter magics the magic we reverse the curse but I will tell you even though that's where our mind goes that's very rarely seen in scripture what this word means I want you to write this down when you hear the word curse it really means the consequence of sin the consequence of disobedience we know there are always consequences anytime anybody disobeys God's Word it's not and I want you to hear me I don't believe that God puts a spell or a hex on an individual as much as we have what's called the laws of God and anytime you break the laws of God you're going to suffer some type of consequence from that for example God has a law called the law of gravity. And if I take a big hammer and I just throw it up in the air and I act like I don't believe in the law of gravity and that hammer comes down and hits me in my head, well, I'm going to have a big gash. I'm going to have to go to the hospital. I'm going to have to get a tetanus shot. I'm going to have to get some stitches. I'm going to be bleeding and bruised on my head there's a lot of consequences all because I fooled around with one of God's laws well likewise God's Word this book is perfect in every way everybody say perfect these laws are perfect and anytime I choose to break one of God's laws I will be cursed, so to speak, with all the consequences of committing that sin or justifying my sin. We know what the Bible says in Galatians 6, 7. It says a man reaps what a man sows. It's a law of God. We also know Romans 3, 23 says the wages of sin is death. But what the Bible teaches is not only will I suffer the consequences, but that my children and my grandchildren will suffer consequences of decisions that I have made so number two write this down there's always a ripple effect anytime someone disobeys God there are natural consequences and there are spiritual consequences now I've told you this before and you're gonna hear me say it again if you hang around here very long but God in heaven was the one who designed and created man And women and he only created two genders some of you are confused you, you either have you either have XX or XY you're male or female that's it okay now you can think you're something else but you're one of those two so his thought was, I'm going to create man to be this and woman to be this, and they're going to come together in the, in, the, in, the, in the parameter of marriage. They're, we're never supposed to come together unless we're married. And so, but he said, oh, I'm going to create man. We're just going, oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. I got some great things. And they're going to have man and woman. And when they come together, married, I'm going to give them a little baby, junior. And he's going to look like his mama. He's going to look like his daddy. And um, God's plan, this was his plan, God's plan, his intent was that when little Junior was born, that that child would have a godly dad and a godly mom pouring into that little baby's life and caring for him. It was also his intent that that little baby would have godly grandparents, that the dad, that godly dad that his mom and dad would be godly grandparents. And then on the wife's side, her parents, the other grand set of grandparents, so that that child, this was his intent. The intent was that whenever a baby was born, that that child would have six grown adults who all love God pouring into the life of that child. And if that child has that, no matter what's going on in the world, 
that child's going to turn out right. But today, Satan has destroyed the family unit with divorce, abuse, and neglect. Today, when a child is born, that child is lucky if it has even one adult pouring spiritual truth into their life. You see, there's a ripple effect of godless schools, godless marriages, godless parenting, godless government, godless dads, godless moms, and godless homes. Instead of that child's heart being taught Bible truth, Bible stories, having a Christian heritage, knowing that Jesus is the Savior of the world, and that child having set an example by its parents and grandparents what the fruit of the Spirit is all about, and these principles called not just love but agape love, and seeing a thing called holiness, and learning the Ten Commandments, and knowing there's a heaven, and knowing there's a hell, and knowing that Jesus saves, and the grace of Jesus Christ, instead of that child getting all that, now Satan has seized control, and the result is we have an entire nation living under a curse of some sort. Now there are natural traits or natural consequences that are handed down from generation to generation. My dad, this has nothing to do with anything spiritual, he was a St. Louis Cardinal baseball fan, and I today am a St. Louis Cardinal baseball fan. People ask me all the time, why do you root for the Cardinals? Well, I only have one answer. It's because my dad did. <laughs> my dad loved Mexican food. And we went every day to eat Mexican food. And he always said, could you bring more salsa? How many of you say that? We all do. What's wrong with these Mexican restaurants? Bring lots of salsa. But anyway, it wasn't for the chips. Dad literally would just take the bowl and start drinking it like, <laughs> like communion. And so guess who likes Mexican food? I, I just raised that way. My dad roots for the Oklahoma Sooners in football, so I'm an Oklahoma Sooner football fan. My dad loved to read books, and he had a huge library. So guess who has a large library? Now, none of that is spiritual. Those are just natural things that get passed down from generation to generation. But spiritual traits are also passed down as well. We know for a fact, statistically, that children raised in divorced homes are more likely to be divorced themselves. It's a fact that children raised in homes where adults lie, cheat, and steal are more likely to lie, cheat, and steal themselves. Children raised in homes where parents commit abuse are more likely to be abusers themselves. Children raised by alcoholic adults are more likely to become alcoholics themselves. Those are just the statistics. The opposite is just as true. A child raised by faithful followers of Jesus Christ are more likely to become faithful followers of Jesus Christ themselves. Children raised by parents who go to church every Sunday are more likely to have children who end up going to church than those who do not go to church. Children raised by parents who don't get a divorce are more likely not to get a divorce themselves. I have three grandsons. I want to show you this picture. <laughs> this is, this is, this is Boo Boo, Simba, and Hey Hey. That's their nicknames. Oh, aren't you so glad that God is faithful in all that he does, that he's full of unfailing love, and that he alone saves? I'm so thankful we serve a God like that. Amen? Amen. Every week here at Lift Up Jesus, we study God's Word and we get to know Him better. And we want to take the truth of God's Word to the four corners of the world through radio, television, and the internet. If you'd like to partner with our ministry through prayer or financial giving, please call the number on the screen below 
or visit our website at liftupjesus.com. It's our goal to reach as many people as possible with the gospel, which has the power to heal hearts, restore lives, and to save souls. We'd be honored if you'd join us in this mission. Thank you for spending this time with me today, and please tune in again next week, same time, same place. And remember, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. It was tough in the 80s growing up um, in all over South Central Los Angeles. A lot of gang activity, a lot of violence. I grew up in a foster home, me and my two sisters in the same home, a single parent home at the time. So we didn't have a lot of money because we were on government assistance because I was a foster child. And it was very known why I ended up in a foster home. Uh, my mother was living a life of crime at the time. She had been on her own since she was 14 years old. And my father was uh, into drug trafficking at the time. A pivotal moment for me was when I learned for the first time that I was actually in a foster home and that my foster mom was not my biological mother. Uh, my sisters were my half-sisters. At that moment, it changed a lot in my life. I had to be around 10 years old. And at that point, I kept looking outside the window and kept waiting for my mother and my father to come and get me out of the home. I used to fight a lot, because in my neighborhood, you know, that's what we did. We fought, and I was always a quiet kid. And I was at that time in my age, I was 16 years old, I asked God, I said, God, if you're real, I asked him, I said, please show me something different, because I was literally about to leave. And the type of person I was, if I would have left and went to the streets, I would have never came back. Um, I do things 100%. If I was going to be 100% good, I would have been 100% good. But if I was going to go to the streets, then that would have been it for me. And literally, God told me three times, and I heard it so clearly. He said, it's not you, it's not you, it's not you. It was one of the few times I did go to church um, and the pastor was preaching on generational curses. So that stuck with me. That made me feel like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do now if this is true? But again, I went back and I said, nah, God, God couldn't have made me just, just to create me to suffer. It has to be more to life than than just what I'm being told or what I'm seeing and what I'm living. So um, maybe I can change things, or at least I'm gonna hang on to see if things change. Another pivotal thing happened in my life. Uh, my sister, Sophia, she was pregnant for the first time with my nephew. And me and her, we were best friends. I mean, she named him after me. Um, and I knew the moment he was born I had to change my life. I had to make sure I was staying on the right path because I wouldn't be surprised if I got a call to have to step in and, you know, have to take care of them. Because um, again, this is how this gets passed down, generational, generational. So I had just proposed to my wife and um, her mother was attending this church for the first time. And it was Shepherd Church. And she asked me one day, she was like, would you like to come to church with me? So I agreed to come with her. That particular sermon, it was almost as if God was speaking directly to me. For whatever reason, he was preaching on generational curses at that time. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, oh, here we go again about this. I've heard this before. But the way he explained it in the scriptures he followed up with it is that Jesus' blessings can overturn any generational curse. And then he starts sharing about Jesus. And to be honest with you, once I read the story of Jesus, it just changed everything for me. About six months later, I ended up dedicating my life to Christ. One of the things that I thought that I wouldn't have any more problems or challenges once I accepted the Lord, everything was going fine in my life. I mean, I'm volunteering, I'm having a great time, my life is on track, my, my wife and my kids are doing well. And then um, 2007, I got a call that my sister's boyfriend had took her life. And it was hard. I went through a trial for 18 months. Um, but again, because of the church and they had a grieving class that met once a week, 
Um, I attended that and it was it was perfect for me because sometimes when you lose someone, however you lose them, you lose them and it's, it's, it, it hurts you, it breaks you. When I had the funeral for my sister, it was in South Central LA and, and uh, I'll never forget when I was sitting there when it was about to start and uh, I saw this uh, tall Caucasian man, <laughs> like 6'4", and it happened to be my pastor with no security, no one but himself coming down in the heart of South Central Los Angeles. And uh, Pastor Dudley was there, and it made all the difference for me in the world. And I said, okay, this guy's solid. He stands by what he preaches. I felt like Pastor Dudley should be in the household name. He should, everyone should know him because I knew of the impact that he made in my life. And if he can make the impact that he did for a South Central foster kid growing up in LA, that it can make a world of difference only if people heard his teachings and experienced Shepherd Church. So that was my main motivation, is just trying to get us to every way a person could um, hear our messages, phone, uh, Roku, Apple, um, through TV, through radio. Uh, that was my main motivation because people are starving out there. They, they need to hear the word. They need to hear, I love the way Pastor Dudley breaks it down, very practical ways so you can apply it to your everyday life. The impact I've seen is, is quite amazing. Honestly, I don't think I have a, enough words to really share when someone can be flipping the channel and something that they're going through just speaks, the Word of God just speaks directly to them. To have someone call in and they're literally in tears because of the message that they heard and was speaking into their life. Um, there's no greater feeling in the world than that. And it shows how the Word of God can penetrate anybody, anyone's background, wherever they are, however they're listening, or however they're watching to know that we're making a difference, not just in our community, but we are making a difference around the world. And there's no greater feeling than that. Research proves that it's the regular hearing and teaching of the Word of God that takes our Christian life to a new level. That's why we invite you to meet Dudley Rutherford every week on this station for another powerful message straight from the Bible. You can also visit liftupjesus.com to sign up for our monthly email devotional, discover Pastor Dudley's books and other resources, and see our national TV and radio schedule. And don't hesitate to reach out on the phone or online. Pastor Dudley has a passion and vision to reach more people with a message of hope. And if you'd like to partner with us to touch the world, we'd love to hear from you. Your financial gift will do so much to help us impact the nations for Christ. And if you're ever in the Southern California area, we invite you to visit us at Shepherd Church here in Los Angeles. It's an amazing experience you'll never forget. Until next time, remember to always lift up Jesus. The preceding program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry.